All right, YouTube, Repo Man 64. Got Worship and Watch playing in the background. Brother Will over there made a video really good. Um, go watch it. Uh, we're all doing math. We're in Discord. There's some math going on that is way over my head. Uh, but I've done some too. And this weekend, like uh, Spinebreaker would say, is very spicy. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of numerical convergences that are happening between today and tomorrow. The, remember, the Bible says, and your feast days, uh, he will turn them into sorrow. Purim already passed. We're already in Nissan. Nissan 1 already passed on March 17th. But they are looking at a different calendar. And like I said so many times before, at the end, we don't know exactly. I think God's going to want to send the Jews a message because that's what tribulation is for, to get to change the hearts and minds of the Jews and, and uh, cause them to return to him. So with that idea in mind, isn't it amazing how the calendars seem to converge? I'm going to show you some math and uh, go through this real quick and some pictures and see... Uh, if we can make a correlation as to why I think it's going to happen, the rapture could very well happen as early as tomorrow, which in Israel they call Purim beginning today at nightfall in Israel. So it is Purim. And at what time does the sun come up? We're six hours different right now until the 29th where they will change time because we changed time last week. They will change time. And... Um, then we'll be seven hours apart again, Eastern Standard Time. So their sun comes up, I think, at 6 a.m., right around there. So tonight at midnight uh, would be when their sun comes up. That's exactly the time at 6 a.m. that they were also attacked on October the 7th. And I'm going to show you some, uh, some numbers here. Let's get into the pictures. All right. Show you where we're at right now. Here's where we are. We are tomorrow, or it's already the 24th in Israel, when Jesus had this meal with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. The Bible says that it was six days before his crucifixion. And, of course, six days from now, it's exactly 150 days after the flood began, just like the Bible said. So the timeline narrows in very tightly there. The triumphal entry is going to be on the 26th. So we're going to see this eclipse happen on the 25th. Is that not correct? Tomorrow, but Yeah, the 25th, Monday night. So that's the same time the triumphal entry is going to happen. So numbers, again, they all seem to uh, be coming together right now at this time. All right. I showed you this before. A lot of people are like, oh, they already sacrificed the red heifer. Now, if they already sacrificed the red heifer, they would have told us. Uh as soon as they do something like that, they are going to announce it. They have not done it yet because we haven't heard that they've done that they've done it. So um, I believe that they're probably going to do this uh, just like this says, because on this day in 2024, in 5784, which it became 5784 on March 17th, uh, Friday night, the 29th, at nightfall, it becomes March the 30th. Remember, Jesus enjoyed the Passover meal. It became the 30th after nightfall on a Friday. And on Saturday, well, the calendar's wrong. The Gregorian calendar is not accurate this year. So it would have been a Wednesday. And then uh, they think they uh, crucified him on a Wednesday. So Tuesday night going into Wednesday. I'll show you that in a moment as well. Um, so the 30th, I believe, is when they're going to sacrifice this red heifer and they're going to burn it up and they're going to save the ashes. All right. We know that the Jews are looking forward to sacrificing their 10th red heifer. But of course, they are wrong. They are about to sacrifice number 11. Uh, when Jesus was sacrificed, the number 10 in the Bible means completion, perfection. It's over with. The number 11 means disorder, chaos, and judgment. Uh, 
we know as Christians that they're about to sacrifice number 11. Now, how many people have been seeing 11, 11 all over the place? Could this be the reason why? I brought this up in my last video. Could this be why we're seeing 11s all over the place? Because God's telling us, hey, when they sacrifice this red heifer, that's it. Chaos will ensue. The rapture will occur. So I showed you this in the last video. And people went nuts, <laughs> to say the least. I didn't say that the Messiah was going to be the one to sacrifice the red heifer. This ad or this uh, notification that I found um, said that. They said this almost a thousand years ago, 800 years ago, taught, this rabbi taught that, 800 years ago, he taught that the 10th red heifer would be sacrificed by Messiah himself. Now, as far as I know, only a Levite can do this, and they have to be prepared for quite some time. If this Messiah is going through these uh, purification processes right now, um, then maybe he could do it. I don't know. I just meant I just saw this uh, article here. Um, they wrote about it in September of 2022. But this rabbi came up with this sometime, you know, 800, 850 years ago, 875 years ago. So I thought that was absolutely incredible when I found it and thought that uh, just bring it to you. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm not saying personally that the Messiah must sacrifice this 11th red heifer. Uh, what I'm saying is this article is saying that that's what's going to happen. So I thought that was pretty incredible. All right, so again, something, something new is happening. This time I am at work. Um, I'm the MOD, the manager in charge, and it's before hours, so I don't uh, mess around with, uh, with uh, being biblical on duty. I'm getting paid a job, and I do my job. I don't, uh, I don't believe that it's my place at work while somebody else is paying me to do something that I should be involved in um, too much biblical discussion, unless it can be done while I'm working or questions for being asked of me. So, that being said, a Jehovah's Witness uh, was talking to me. And I asked him, I said, the Watchtower, you guys have this extra biblical book. And I said, if you were to see the rapture occur, would you throw that book away and just study the Bible alone? And he said, no. I'm like, why? He said, because if the rapture occurs, it wasn't a rapture. It was uh, God getting those evil people out of the way so we could run the world. And I said, oh, that's where that's coming from. That's coming from the Jehovah's Witness. So as hard as I tried um, to talk to him about his extra biblical book, he was thoroughly convinced. And that's where Satan has done his best work. Satan knows that this rapture is going to happen. He has already convinced these people that when it does, it wasn't a rapture. It was something else. And so he's already done a very good job. And I couldn't get through to this guy. I couldn't get through to him, which is rare. I normally can. And I told him, when this occurs, it's going to be a rapture. No, nope, it's just God getting the people, uh, the, get the evil people off of here. Uh, no, that's not, that's not what's going to happen. Only a certain amount of people go to heaven. And I'm like, Ugh. I couldn't get through to him. So. I don't, maybe some of you could put in the comments how to, because that didn't work. <laughs> the, the one thing I have that I use didn't work. You can't tell a Jehovah's Witness that when you see me go, it, it just didn't work. Does anybody know in the comments section um, how to, uh, to battle that ideology when I'm speaking to a Jehovah's Witness? Again, it just, it, it, here in the last couple of weeks, this type of stuff just began happening to me. With the Mormons that came up, they admitted, if it happens, I will throw away the Book of Mormon and just read the Bible. And I said, okay, good. The Jehovah's Witness, I couldn't get through to one. It's really loud out here because it's raining. It's raining a lot. So let me get back into the pictures. All right. This is our warning. This is the warning. The very last uh, verse in the very last book of the Bible. 
this is why you don't say the book of Enoch should be in the Bible or the book of Jubilees or um, the legends of the Jews or all these other books that the Catholics have put into the Bible. You just don't. You just don't. It, this is why right here. And when you do specific things with the Bible where they count, you know, passages back and forth and everything lands perfectly, it can only do that if you have exactly the amount of books that are in there. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So it's a huge warning. And, uh, of course, you get a blessing when you read from Revelation. Um, but this is a huge warning that nothing is to be added to the Bible. Nothing. The Bible is everything we need for salvation. We don't need anything else. Now, if you understand and you're saved and you want to read these other books to glean some historical value from them, that's fine. But to add to it, I'm vehemently against it myself. All right. Math. March 24th, that's, uh, that's tomorrow. If you go six months, you land on September 24th, which is the Day of Atonement. I thought that was pretty cool. Six months from tomorrow. Now, remember, in Exodus 12, God said, this now is ahead of your year. What does that, in essence, mean? And so many people will argue, well, no, nope, September the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Tishri 1 is Rosh Hashanah. Well, no, it's not. The Bible clearly says that uh, it's Tishri 1, it's the seventh month. Rosh Hashanah literally means the first month. So Rosh Hashanah has just passed on March 17th. So, but it overlays. And if you look at the, the account in the Bible of the crucifixion and look at the account in the Bible of Jesus' birth, they overlay almost perfectly. Let me show you that real quick, just so you get an idea. All right. Let's see here. Where are we at? Back here. Right here. Tishri 1, September 15th. Feast of Trumpets. Rosh Hashanah has been moved. And the only feast day we have on this day is Feast of Trumpets. We do not have Rosh Hashanah because Rosh Hashanah literally means head of the year. And we know the Bible says it's the seventh month. So it's not Rosh Hashanah. It's not the head of the year. But if you go down three days later... It's the last day of uh, creation where God rested. And if you go down to September the 25th, it's the Day of Atonement. That's the 10 days of all. September 25th. Remember those dates. Uh, yeah, remember those dates. Jesus is born on September the 30th, Tishri 15. Jesus is circumcised on October the 8th. Okay? Remember those dates. Let's go back here real quick, and I'll show you how it overlays exactly. All right, March the 17th is the head of the year, Rosh Hashanah. You go down three days, Lazarus is resurrected. You go down to the 25th, you'll see on the 24th, or I haven't put it on here yet, but the 25th is the day that Jesus has a meal in the Pharisee's house, the one that was leprous, that is not leprous now. And when he was there, Mary anointed his head. He did that in two different uh, books of the Bible. And then that was five days before the cross, uh, one day before the triumphal entry. The triumphal entry happened on March the 26th. You see all these dates overlap. Jesus was born on September the 30th. Jesus went to the cross on March the 30th. Six months perfectly, perfectly, perfectly apart there. So you can, you can look at that uh, for yourself and see how that lands. All right. Where was I? Here, next one. October 24th is the day God told Noah to get into the ark. Noah goes and sits in the ark. The ark door is open for seven days. After seven days, God shut the door and the flood begins on nightfall on October the 31st, which is November the 1st. Now, remember, we have a mathematical issue. You can see here it says, but not including Sunday, March 24th. The reason is, is because October the 20, I'm sorry, February the 29th does not actually exist. It's a made up day that they put in there to try to balance the calendar because they won't start the year 
on the day of equal parts. They start the year. And even the Gregorian calendar is wrong by, I think it's 11 seconds every year because they don't start the year at the exact moment. March the 16th is the only day. Well, there's two, but it's the only day in spring that has exactly 12 hours a day and 12 hours at night. So October the 24th, Noah goes into the ark and sits there. If you count back, I'm sorry, forward five months, you land on March the 24th, tomorrow. You know, they say cut the time short to five months. I don't know where that applies, but it's it's kind of cool how it, again, lands perfectly on the timeline. November the 1st, that's when the flood began, October the 31st at night. Again, we have that issue with February the 29th, so just include March the 30th. That's the day Jesus went to the cross. It's 150 days, just like the Bible says. 150, somebody asked me, how do you associate the two? Well, that's easy. Jesus went down to the grave. The ark settled down on Mount Ararat. Three days later, Jesus rises. Mount Ararat, three days later, seven months, 17th day, is reverse the, the curse. So it was. it's perfect. It's perfect um, that they land together. That's exactly 150 days. And then 153 days is, this is Mount Ararat, uh, where it sits down the seventh month and 17th day, and it's April the 2nd, 153 days. And that's where I think the 153 days comes in. All right. So now, when did they change the cat? What calendar was Moses on? Well, Moses was on the calendar I'm showing to you. That's the calendar Moses used. Moses wrote the Bible or the first five books of the Bible in somewhere between the 15th and 13th century B.C. So he, when he spoke of the seventh month and 17th day, he knew because God told him to change the head of the year. He knew the seventh month and 17th day meant, meant that it was down in September. He wrote the first five books of the Bible. Way back then, 1500 years before Jesus came. But then look. We have this warning. Again, doesn't belong in the Bible, but it's a good history book. We get enough clues in the Bible. I got all my clues in the Bible on where to start this calendar, this timeline, and where everything fit aside from the Enoch. The Enoch only is a history book, which confirmed it. I, at first, of course, when it said, don't use the moon, I was like, really? I mean, the moon, they all use the moon. There's a reason why they use the moon. It was the official calendar of the Greeks. And when Alexander the Great conquered the Middle East in the 4th century BC, BCE, remember, 1500 to 1300, and this is, and that's almost 1,000 years, 900 to 1,000 years uh, that the head of the year was changed. And then here comes Alexander the Great in 400 BC. And he introduces the lunar calendar. The lunar calendar was introduced and gradually accepted by most of the people except for the Hebrew people. In 172 BC, King Antichus appointed Menelaus as Jerusalem's high priest to introduce the Greek way of educating the young people and to completely Hellenize the Hebrew people. He also sent a senator from Athens to give the Hebrew people an ultimatum to forsake the laws of their God, Yah, and follow the king's orders to be or be put to death. So most of the Hebrew people followed the king's orders to save their families, and many were put to death. King Atticus forced the Hebrew people to celebrate the birthday of the month every month at the time of the moon's first visibility. This is the sliver of the moon. This is incredible. We are not to use the moon to begin the month or the year or anything. The moon is there as a harbinger or a warning. Now, that lasted from 400 B.C. to 45 B.C. We're still 45 years before Christ comes. He came in 3 B.C. or 4 B.C. So, you know, we're still 41, 42 years before Jesus comes. Julian, Julius Caesar ordered a calendar consisting of 12 months based on a solar year. They got away. The moon was only implemented 
for 350 years, but it's stuck and it's still sticking. They're still looking at it today. This calendar employed the cycle of three years of 365 followed by a year of 366. So anytime somebody says the Julian calendar, the Julian calendar, that's great because it was implemented before Christ. The problem with the Julian calendar was it was off. They had the same similar names for the months that we do now for the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar was modeled after the Julian calendar. The problem is by the time they came up with the Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar uh, was so far off by 10 days that they had to fix it in 1582. The original goal of the Gregorian calendar was to change the date of Easter. In 1582, Pope Gregory introduced his, this, uh, sorry, his uh, Gregorian calendar. Europe adhered to the Julian calendar, first implemented by Julius Caesar in 46 BC. Since the Roman, <coughs> sorry, since the Roman emperor's system miscalculated the length of a solar year by 11 minutes, the calendar had since fallen out of sync with the seasons. This concerned Gregory because it meant that Easter traditionally observed on March 21st, fell further away from the spring equinox with each passing year. All right, so you see this. This is, so just to clarify what I'm getting at here, everyone's like, well, on the Julian calendar, look, the Julian calendar's been wrong 11 minutes a year for the past 46 BC till now. What is that, 2000, you know, a lot of years, right? 2020 plus 40, 2,600, 2,066 years. It's been, it's been off each year by 11 minutes. So at this point, when they make the Gregorian calendar to try to fix the problem, um, 11 minutes a year over the course of 1,500 years, it was way off. And today, even though they'll still try to use the Julian calendar, you can't. It's still even for the last 500 years, 11 minutes a day, uh, a year for the last 500 years. So it's it's way off. It, the only correct count that the Julian calendar might have by now is the day count. That's the one I look at when I look at the Julian calendar, and it might be off by a few days simply because of you know it was 10 days off uh, when Gregory tried to fix it. So, and even the Gregorian calendar is off by seconds every single year. They use a different form of of how to uh, straighten out the calendar, and they moved it by 10 days. Everybody knows that. It wasn't anything nefarious. They were simply trying to straighten it back up to where spring meant spring and not summer. So let me keep going here. This guy right here, Blueprint. Um, nothing Christian in his YouTube, but he does an incredible job of explaining um, the side real day. I've explained this before. There's actually 23 hours and 56 minutes. They take away four minutes a, a, a day. And if you add four minutes a day for 364 days, which is there's actually only 364 days in a year, that means that <clears throat> 364 is divisible by seven. It's 52. 52 times seven is 364. That means that when Jesus went to the cross on Wednesday and rose on Sunday, Every single year on March 30th, when he went to the cross, it would be a Wednesday, just like it is in 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. And every single year, if the Gregorian calendar adhered to the day of equal parts, Jesus would rise on Sunday, the first day, and it would be April the 3rd, every single year. But it's not because the Gregorian calendar is using, is shortened each day by by four minutes and by the time you get all the way down to february you're off you're way off so go watch his video he does a really good explanation on it it's called a side real day there is actually only 364 days in a year all right let's get back to the bible for god now this is this is where it gets me when people are like oh we're all going to go through tribulation there's a reason why you can only see that there is an exact reason why you can only see that you will go into tribulation. There is an exact reason why you can only see that. Um, hold on a second. Okay. 
there's a there's a reason why you can see uh, the tribulation that you can see the seals already being opened. It's because you are associating with that dispensation, and uh, it's scary because uh, tribulation is not a fun place to be. But I'll give you some good news. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salva uh, salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, whether we're alive or dead, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So, let me comfort you. The rapture is going to happen. It is going to happen before any seals open. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Once that blood gets on you, you're stained. It doesn't come off. Uh, Lisa Boyce does a really good job of explaining that in the beginning of every single one of her videos. For the first two minutes, two and a half minutes, that's what she explains and describes. You cannot lose your salvation. And once you are saved, the Holy Spirit will indwell in you. He will change you. He will convict you of every sin that you do. You will sin. Don't think you're sinless as soon as you uh, become saved. When Jesus told the woman who was going to be stoned, go and sin no more. He didn't say, if you go and sin, by the way, I'm going to take away that salvation. He didn't say that. He told her to go and sin no more. The Holy Spirit will convict you of everything you do, and you're going to feel shame for it. You have friends. You have friends who can't wait to go out and sin. Tonight, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. And I'm going to be right on the edge of the law, just close enough not to be arrested. But yeah, we're going to have a good time. We aren't like that anymore. Um, there's so many things. I mean, I, I could tell you so many things that I just didn't, that I have no desire to do anymore. But what's the point? I want to talk about me. Uh, because those are mine. You have yours. Um, I haven't tasted alcohol in years. Now, I've never had a problem with it. It could When I was in my 20s, if it disappeared off the face of the earth, it wouldn't have bothered me. But I drank. And I just decided years and years ago, I'm just not going to do it anymore. I haven't had a taste of alcohol in, good Lord, six, seven years. I, I don't know. I don't, of course, I don't, I never really cared before that, but I just decided one day I'm not going to drink anything anymore. Where did that come from? Now, I'm not like telling you how great I am because I'm not. That's that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the Holy Spirit, like Lisa Boy says, will get in you and will change you and convict you. And just something about alcohol just told me I just don't. I don't need it. And I don't want it. So I don't. I don't. I just don't. And uh, so. You know, there's people that are struggling with things and they're questioning their own salvation because they're struggling with them. Look, if you're struggling and you have accepted the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit working in you. You feel bad. Yeah, it's it's, it's kicking your butt sometimes, right? Maybe that's what I'm supposed to tell you today. Yes, it's kicking your butt. Don't question your salvation over your sins. That is not biblical. Your sins were paid for, past, present, future. It's all paid for. It's done. Don't try. There is one way to hell, and that's by sinning, and we've all done it. There isn't a single one of us that have it. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus, and that's it. There is nothing more. Not be good. There is no such thing as having Jesus and going to hell, and there's no such thing as stop sinning and you're going to heaven. I don't care how much you've stopped sinning. If you don't have Jesus, you're not going to heaven. If you're trying to get there under your own works, it ain't going to work. I hope I can get that through and make you understand, especially in the time of the tribulation. Everyone's coming with their own works, just like the rich man that came to Jesus and said, Hey, since my youth, I've done everything. I am so proud of myself. And Jesus basically said, You don't need me. You're doing great on your own, man. High five. You got it. You're not sin you're not a sinner. Oh, by the way, go sell all your stuff and follow me. Couldn't do it. He was very well, uh, wealthy. Couldn't do it. So, just remember that. I don't know who's going into the tribulation, but I do know one thing. It's another chance. And that's awesome. There will be no point in in uh in eternity where we will be like yeah, but Lord, 
circumstances, you know, I mean, I was in a better circumstance. That's why I accepted you. Uh-uh. No. But Lord, he was raised in horrible conditions, and that's why he didn't accept you. No. They're associating sin with heaven. You can't unsin your way to heaven. You understand that? That's what I'm trying to get through to everybody. You cannot unsin your way. I'm better today. I'm better than that guy. You know, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, just like the rich man. I, you cannot be good enough to get there. Is that clear? There's only one way there, and that's through Jesus. And once that blood gets on you, it doesn't it come off. All right. Enough of that. Let me get back to this. So. The good news is I'm going to comfort you and let you know that the rapture is going is about to happen. And it is going to happen before the tribulation. It's going to happen before the first seal is open. And it is about to happen. It's it's they I'm I'm honestly surprised we're still here. There is a trigger event that hasn't quite occurred yet, but it's coming. It's almost here. All right. Why did I highlight this? And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. Who shall? Oh, I highlighted this because somebody said that the six seals are not the wrath. The six seals are the wrath. Every bit of the tribulation is being under the wrath of God. We will escape that wrath. We will not be in that wrath. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. These people will be hiding in caves, closing the door. They want to hide their face from the one that sits on the throne. They don't want to see Jesus. The great day of his wrath has come. Jesus' wrath begins when he's standing in heaven in front of John. John is weeping because nobody, <coughs> excuse me, nobody can take the scroll and break the seals thereof. And here comes the lion of the tribe of Judah, and he breaks the seals. Those seals of this of the, the six seals are the wrath of God. Uh okay. What did I do? Oh that is it. Okay. This is something I posted in Discord. I'll put a link in the comment section. You can, uh, the link will allow you to get into the Discord. And if you have math, we love it. This is my room. There are several rooms. If you believe in a certain way of thinking, uh, we don't discourage you from coming into Discord. We only discourage you from putting it in any single room you want to. Just put it into, if somebody says, hey, go into the rapture room with that or go into the this room with that, they just guiding you to a room where people actually discuss that stuff. Whether we believe in it or not, you can go in there and discuss it, try to prove your point. Um, but you can't do it in just any room. When I figured out years ago that March 30th was when Jesus went to the cross, it confused me. March 30th. Then over the years, I added all of the dates that I found. I realized, yes, that's the date. But when they called it Shabbat Parah, and that's the day they will sacrifice the red heifer, I was floored. So I'm, I put this comment in there. Jesus did go to the cross on March 30th. March 30th was a Wednesday. The calendar in 2022 is accurate. It goes all the way through. September the 11th is the first day of the, of the week. It's a Sunday. It's the first day of creation. It all matches. 2022 matches all the way through perfectly. So... I make this post in here, and while I'm thinking about it, I, I've always asked, why, Lord, didn't you go to the cross on April the 1st? It would have been the perfect April Fool's Day thing, right? Perfectly. And then I realized, from March the 30th to April the 3rd, Jesus goes to the cross, dies on the cross at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on 3.30, 30 AD at 3 p.m. April the 1st at 9 a.m. is exactly the center point between the 30th and the 3rd. He rises April the 3rd at um, 3 a.m. He's in the grave for 84 hours, times, time, and half a time. Three and a half days. One day, two days, and a half a day. Time, times, and half a time. That's how long he's in there, 84 hours. 
And I realized the very center of that is 9 a.m. on April the 1st. While I'm typing this, I was in my own head. I was like, wow, that's crazy. But when they call it Shabbat Parah, that's the day they're going to sacrifice this red heifer. They have, I showed you the, the uh, article that they're going to do this on March the 30th. March the 30th, the day Jesus went to the cross. Of course, I was floored. The Jews whom we pray for, we pray for the Jews. We're not mad at the Jews. We pray for them. But they will make the 11th sacrifice the same exact day they did almost 2,000 years ago. 11 means judgment. I showed you that. 11 means judgment. The 10th red heifer that they think they're about to sacrifice, they have ignored the fact that they have already sacrificed Jesus almost 2,000 years ago. And 10 means completion. Done. It's over. It encompasses all of it. 10 is finished. 11 means judgment. That's why I don't think we can be here on March the 30th. I don't think we can be here for this red heifer to be sacrificed because judgment, we escape judgment. We won't be here for it. The second they sacrifice this red heifer, judgment will fall on this earth and the bride will be taken away. Let's see here. 11 means judgment. We aren't here for judgment. The rapture is as big a judgment as the flood. On October the 24th, God told Noah to get into the ark. In Exodus 12, God said, this now is the head of your year. March 23rd, that's today, is six months earlier. So, is that right? No, it's seven months earlier. March to uh, October the 24th. March 24th, October the 24th is seven months earlier. It's a mistypo there. Today is a very big day. We watch and wait for the Lord. God bless. We're going home soon. So what I was trying to say in that in that uh, discord is that from March the 24th, which is tomorrow, until the day God told Noah to get into the ark on October the 24th, that is seven months. From October the 24th to tomorrow is five months. Very prophetic numbers right there. So something to look at. All right. I uh, just wanted to do a quick video um, to clear up. I did not say that the Messiah had to do this. They said it a thousand years ago. They said that. That was an article that I, I read you in the last video. Uh, but is it possible that uh, he's the one that's going to do it? I don't know. I don't know the laws surrounding that idea. I believe a Levite must do it. And I don't. And I believe, as far as I know, the Antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan. So I don't see how that actually would work personally. Uh, but maybe some of you might in the comments section how I, the the uh, the Antichrist uh, could come in because that's who he is. They call him Messiah. We know him as Antichrist could come in and sacrifice this red heifer. I don't know. So anyway, like, comment, share and subscribe and go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know and you don't need to tell anybody except the Lord in your heart. Um, keep looking up. Uh, they just had a, what was that there, like a 7.0 earthquake in Papua New Guinea. It's, it's, it's heating up out there. Something's going to go down. Something's going to go down very soon. Just, just keep watching. It's, it's coming very soon. All right, we'll chat with you all again later.